The Endurance is our main interstellar ship. It's the vehicle that carries our characters out of our solar system. It was always going to be grounded in NASA and the International Space Station and the shuttle and those technologies. When we came to look at how we would make the, the actual design of, of the Endurance for the movie, we decided that we wanted it to have something of the character of the, the ISS in that we wanted it to look modular. We wanted it to look like smaller parts have been flown up on different missions and in the zero gravity of low Earth orbit, they've been assembled into this somewhat more fragile shape than you could ever build on Earth and then lift off the Earth because of the, the strains and stress due to gravity. And then the circular shape came about really as a result of knowing that for such a long-term exposure to zero gravity, the ship would have to create some kind of artificial gravity for the bodies of the astronauts because if you spend years in zero gravity, your muscles will atrophy a circular shape where the craft can be spun to create artificial gravity for the astronauts to live in was a, a defining characteristic of the design. It was really about moving to the next step of if you created an interstellar ship that could achieve spin and gravity, how would it look and what would you need? And it's, it's designed as a series of 12 pods and each pod has a function and they're in groups of fours, four engines, four a habitat and four are landing pods we decided that we needed to really build three pods, the cockpit in the middle, then the habitat pod and the cryopod. Because of the angle of the movement from pod to pod, we needed to put it on a, a giant hydraulic rocker so we can raise and lower each pod to level so we can shoot it level and then we will still have perspective through and up to the other pods. We, we built basically the rocker that could tip it from 45 degrees each direction. It was 160 feet long, so the entire frame, everything, all the structure had to be built and engineered, and then all the hydraulic system same thing, everything was built and engineered. All the components, the pistons, everything was custom built for that rig. We wanted the, the technology of the inside of the spaceships, particularly, uh, to reflect the way space travel is, is done now. This is our interior endurance. This is basically the cockpit. The cockpit pod was really about communicating and steering the thing. So you have navigation up here and you have piloting up above and communications down below, which is has a sort of level of privacy to it. But, um, you know, everything is packed away. So, you know, you have, you, know, you have tables here. So you, you can, you know, everything is stowed, much like a ship. We've got, you know, seats that come out. You know, everything, like these are our, when you navigate, because you're navigating in a new solar system, you know, we needed to create, you know, whiteboards so you could work out orbits. You know, this stuff is just scrolling data and updates. I didn't really want anything that was too, too glossy and too fanciful. The ISS is full of handles. How would you move around this space, you know, in zero G, you know? So how would you get from here to here to there, around your airlock and then around here? So you, 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 you'd have to pull yourself around. The problem is to travel vast distances is you have to take everything with you because it's space. So the amount of stuff you need to carry is vast. So everything is storage. Yeah, you know, a lot of this is we ended going to the scrapyard. A lot, I mean, these are galley boxes from aeroplanes. We, we ended up mixing stuff we could get so we could get the age of realism of some of these parts. And then we would manufacture bits and pieces to, to tie them in. I mean, these are actually galley units from aeroplanes that we just retrofitted just to give us some realism. Because this ship has, has been built over 20 years, so some of the technology would be older, some of it would be newer. So what would you do if you had no more funding? Well, you better fix up the old gear because you don't have money to create the new gear. So it does have a sort of a, a blue collar feel to it. It's not overly slick, it's metal and screws. The computers are there, but you still gotta give it some elbow grease to make things work. So now we're coming into the cockpit. This is the flight center of the Endurance. A lot of this stuff was built on the idea that you'd have four engine pods and you, you'd have to rotate. This ship is about rotation and slow moving. It's like a truck, it lumbers along. You know, you wouldn't have big windows. I mean, you're, you're trying to protect yourself from somewhere you shouldn't be in space, so the windows are small.
And within this claustrophobicness, you've got to see a little bit of perspective. If you don't identify the ends of your set, then the place feels bigger. So down here below the cockpit is the comm room. This is the main comm station where you could send messages home. Again, we took old flight chairs and then retrofitted them. The comm room was designed with a level of privacy. So, you know, if you wanted to shut yourself off, you could. And again, we got windows. So if, you, if you're having a quiet moment in floating around space, you could you have a great view. Right now, we're, uh, um, we're in the cockpit still, and we're at level. So. In terms of our hydraulic pod system, we're at this pod, because it's one of three, is at level. So the one up here, the habitat will be at about uh, 25, 30 degrees up. So now I'm at an angle. So up above is our entrance tube. Basically, this is you, you dock your ship up there and you come down into the endurance here. And then we have living quarters back here, which is just a series of bunks. Over here is a sort of kitcheny, you know, living area where you might hang out. So, uh, uh, again, there's lots of seats tucked away into the floor. If you want to, if you want to have a sit down and have a chat, there's more tables and chairs here. So all this stuff unfolds. There's other seats in back areas. This is definitely where you might, you might hang out. Yeah, you know, we looked at a ton of that. Obviously, NASA reference for hatches. This is a hatch we saw. I think it was on the ISS. I mean, they spent decades designing this stuff, on it, so we wanted to bring that realism into the set. This is one of our airlock doors. You know, so it slides across here, and then it pushes in, and then this system locks. So this is all working linkages. Everything should work automatically, like in a spaceship, so that all falls under uh, special effects. We did 14 airlock doors through there. There was all kinds of automatic mechanisms that work throughout it that were all remote controlled. We had a split-level cryopod lab unit, the biggest portion of the set. It was Dr. Brand's lab, a sterile airlocked place for our, what we call the population bomb. Our cryopod area, I very much pushed the white tiles and the medical equipment and the fill that you were really going in for surgery, essentially. Everything has to be high-tech and believable and, and kind of automated. So there was a lot of elements just to the cryo beds. They had to be able to travel 20 feet from below the ship and come up to like a ready loading position. The doors were automated, the baskets, and then they had this idea of the plastic, almost like a body bag covering them. To get all those pieces working in harmony in camera was a little bit of a, of a challenge. It's oftentimes thought to be much easier to just build it all in post and put the actors in front of a green screen. And I think that what's great about building sets like that is, for the actors, it's an amazing thing because they're not having to supply the whole thing in their minds. They're able to really interact with their physical surroundings. I know that for me, walking onto these sets and into these circumstances, it creates, I think, an emotional response. There's nothing cozy on the endurance, everything on the spaceship is practical. Everything has a use, it's very utilitarian. You just imagine what that would do to you over years and years and how that would make you a bit weary. There's something about being in that enclosed environment and something that that's created between all of us, a sense of, of unity and a sense of familiarity with each other. We never believed in sort of expanding sets just to accommodate for the camera. We didn't want to get tempted into faking ourselves into angles that are in, in fact in, impossible for real. Think about the fact that NASA sent uh, IMAX cameras up to space and they can film with that camera in very small spaces. By doing that you create a very specific feeling and we want to replicate that.